Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. I welcome you. And I pray for you that as we share together the Word of God for today, Monday, August 21st, 2023, we shall be blessed body, soul, and spirit in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Eternal Father, unto you we give glory, honor, and adoration. For you have called us and you have given us standard by which we should live our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of calling us. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of your instruction to us. As we are about to share, we trust that your wisdom will guide us. And this word will not just come into us, but will transform us and make us who you want us to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we perfect the work of Christ in us. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Once again, today is August 21, 2023, and the topic before us says Christ's standard for the church. Christ's standard for the church. Our passage is Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I read, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the mayor of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, that he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not him, I things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest 
in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he test, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil. Overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. All praise and thanks to God Almighty for this special message that he has given us as a church to our world. The topic once again says Christ's standard for the church. Oh, there is a standard. Christ's standard for the church. Let us look again at the key words we have in the topic. Christ is the anointed one or the Messiah, the anointed one or the Messiah. What are we saying here? One who has authority to address. One who has authority to tell us what we ought to do. The anointed of God. And we talk about standard. Standard means falling within an accepted range of quality. The accepted range of quality. The accepted range of character, of behavior to Christ. What Christ expects of those who follow him, those who believe in him. And that is the message he passed through Apostle Paul to the church at Rome. That believers need to live outstanding life. Exceptionally good life. Especially in their world. Apostle Paul here made us to understand that Christ determined to lead his people to his kingdom. Not for them to reign here on earth, but that his people will be led to his kingdom where they will live with him at the end. And so his church will be defined as a single spiritual commodity, a single spiritual commodity of Christians, those who are actually following his guidelines, what he wants from them. There is a legal maxim in law that says, delege lata, delege ferenda. It simply talks about the law as it is and the law as it ought to be. There have been messages before Christ. People have talked about God, defining God in their own way. But Christ came and his apostle Paul preached what should be the standard of those who belong to this Christ, what they are expected to do. And that is what we have in the whole chapter 12 of the book of Romans that we have considered. The acceptable lifestyle of those who belong to Christ. So we talk about the standard as it ought to be, you know, the standard as it ought to be, the way of life as it ought to be. Yes, when Christ was on heart, there were people that lived with him. They lived their own life. In fact, many of them understood law and they taught law in the way they best understood it. But when Christ picked law one after the other and was dissecting and teaching them, he taught to the point that Understanding the law is not just understanding the words they are in, but ability to carry them out, to showcase the lifestyle described by the law. What are we talking about here? Apostle Paul, church believers, brethren. I beseech you, brethren. He did not address the people outside the world. He addressed brethren. So if you are a brother or you are a sister in Christ, Listen this morning. There is a standard of life that God expects from us. 
there are things we ought not to do that we are doing. There are things we should do that we have left undone. And I pray as we look at this together this morning, God of heaven himself will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The first charge we have from this chapter is to present our bodies, recognizing the fact that we have parts of our body. As a person, I have my eyes, I have my hands, I have my legs, I have my brain, I have my nostrils, my nose even to even perceive, I have my skin to feel. How do I feel? What do I see? What do I love to see? What things do I love doing with my hands? Where do I love to go? Where do I prefer to be by my own volition? Am I supposed to be there or not? What are the things I say with my mouth? What are the things I eat with my mouth? You know, these are standard. Yeah, we are talking about standard. What Christ expects from those who are his. We are in the world. Bible tells us, but we are not of the world. So our life is supposed to be, you know, different from the, what people call normal in the world. We are supposed to be guided by the word of God. So we should present our bodies. We should present our bodies as a living sacrifice. The one that is holy and acceptable. In fact, the Bible describes it as our spiritual worship. If you understand how to pay tight, we understand how to dance, we understand how to come to church and work as, as workers in the vineyard. We understand how to give people gifts, charity. But we don't understand how to use these our bodies. We may miss it. And Christ does not want us to miss it. Apostle Paul is hammering it again to our hearing. That as believers in Christ Jesus, we should live to the best that Christ expects us to live. And I want to bring out a few of those standards that Christ talks about here. As Paul, you know, listed them in the passage. Number one thing that I would love to talk about is in verse 9. Love. We are supposed to love, you know, to the point that the world will be amazed. Bible tells us that what difference are we making if we love the way the world loves? If we give to people the way people the way the world will give. We are supposed to love, you know, unconditionally. The love to display should not be by feeling, should not be by what we see, the beauty in it. The love we display should not be by emotion. It should be the agape type of love. Just as Christ loved the church, that he even died for it. We are supposed to love, love the church that Christ died for. So our love lifestyle should be undiluted, should be agape type. We should love unconditionally, not because one is close to me, not because it belongs to my church. We should love as Christ loves. Bible tells us that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Paul admonished in verse 9 that love be without dissimulation. Abhor that wish is evil. When you love, you will run away from evil. And I pray the Lord will help you and I to hold fast this word this morning. To love in order to run away from evil and to hold fast that which is good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The second lesson says that we should be kind. We should be kind. Kindness may be a, a part of you know, us showing love to our world. Let us be kind. Let us be kind. Not only to those who give to us. Not only to those who are close to us. But kind to the general populace. Don't say he's Hausa. He's a Yoruba man. And I'm an Igbo person. No. Don't say he's an Igbo person. And I'm an Hausa man. Be kind to all. Be kind to all. That's the standard, Christ's standard for the church. Anyone who approaches the church of God should be blessed, either in word, in gift, even financially. We should learn to be kind to our world so that we can make difference, so that we can, our message can sink deep into them, so that we can be different. 
to the people we preach to. And I pray the Lord will help us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I am concentrating on Romans chapter 12 because it's full of messages. It's full of messages. You know, Bible tells us again that as believers, we need to rejoice in hope. And we should be patient in tribulation. My brothers, my sisters, my fathers, my mothers, listeners, are you patient in tribulation? Are you sure the, the, the wind of what you are going through is not carrying you here and there? Are you patiently waiting on Christ to solve your problem? Say, we should have hope. We should have hope. Christ, whom we believe in, he is able. Bible tells us he is abundantly able to do all things. He can solve that problem. Only have hope, have faith, and wish, wait patiently for him to solve your problem. And I pray as we wait, as we wait as a standard, waiting on him, not making him do what you want at the time you want it, but waiting on him is a quality that Christ wants from us, a standard we are to keep, ability to wait on him. And I pray the Lord will help us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bible tells us again that we should even bless those that persecute us. In persecution, I hope we are not carried away. I hope we are not carried away. When we are persecuted, we need to bless. We need to bless. What should come to our mind should not be how to cause, how to fight back, how to avenge. That is not. We need to bless. Bible tells us in his word, according to verse 14, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. That is the standard. Believers, as we ought to be, we are supposed to be people that curse. Frail words are not supposed to be heard from us. Dirty languages are not supposed to be heard from us. We are supposed to bless those who persecute us. It is easier said than done. But I pray that the Holy Spirit of God himself will make you, who is listening to me, or those of you who are listening to me this morning, to be able to bless those who persecute you. Of course, Nigeria is going through persecution. Are you sure you are not part of those who are cursing the government? Are you sure you are not part of those who are saying bad things about them? We need to bless them. Let's keep blessing them. That God will make things better for us. God will change our leaders. And God will still use them. Let us use the words of our mouths that are powerful, full of God's authority and power, to make them do what they ought to do for us. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bible says, again, in verse 17, that we should not revenge. It says, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Are you sure, brothers, sisters, fathers, and mothers, listening to me this morning, that you don't revenge? Evil for evil. According to the Old Testament laws, Eye for high, toot for toot. Are you sure you are not still part of this, you know, principles and doctrine that Christ has, you know, developed, modernized, and presented to us so as to be able to take us to eternity? He wants our totality. This book of Romans chapter 12 is making us to be totally comforted, you know, conformed to the standard of Christ in body in soul, and in spirit. And this is the time. This is the hour. In this, our corrupt world, God wants people that will still stand out for him. God wants people that will still be exceptionally good for him. People who will not revenge. People who will not curse. People who will not hate, but love. He says, in furtherance of that in verse 18, if it be possible, as much as light in you, live peaceably with all men. Are you sure you are living peaceably with people in your office? People in your immediate family? As husband, are you living peaceably with your wife? As a wife, are you living peaceably with your husband and family members? Not even talk of the, the extended ones. Are you sure you are living in peace with them? Are you sure? Ask yourself and answer the question. It is a command. 
It is a command. It is a standard we ought to meet. If only we want to get to heaven. It is an instruction that we cannot fail to carry out. And I pray that the Lord will help us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. It concludes in verse 19. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. The Bible is not saying that we should not be angry. Of course, as human beings, we will be hungry. But in your hunger, in your hunger, give room for forgiveness. Give room for forgiveness. Don't allow the sun to set while you are still hungry. And that is what the word of the Lord says. He said, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. Do you always wait for God to fight for you? Do you always wait for God to fight for you? Or you are the one that does fight for yourself? I will repay, says the Lord. That is what he says. So I beseech you this morning, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, wait on God. Wait on God. Don't revenge. That woman that has done you wrong, that man, that boy, that girl, don't revenge. Wait on God. Trust God to fight for you. Trust God to fight for you. Therefore, as we have in verse 20, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. It is a standard we need to keep. Although so many people are interested in feeding so that they can heap money coal upon their heads. As believers, this should not be our interest. This latter part of the verse should not be our interest. For the purpose of heaping bunny coals on them, fill them. Let those who are washing, because we have passers by, standers by, who are washing us, who want to see our reaction on a daily basis, everywhere we find ourselves, in our places of work, in church, in communities, you know, in our society. They want to see the message we preach. We are the scriptures. We are. We are the words that people read. And that's what the word of God tells us. So, live your life to the standard of Christ. Live your life to the standard of Christ. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. Feed him. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that is what Christ wants from all of us. Truly as children of God, all that God expects from us as individuals, families, and church is to sincerely offer our souls, spirits, and bodies to him. This is the time and the hour to worship God in spirit and in truth. And that is the admonition we have in Romans chapter 12. The admonition we have in Romans chapter 12 to worship God in body and in truth. We should avoid all forms of worldly contaminations. All forms of worldly contaminations as we have in you know, the book of Galatians chapter 5. Book of Galatians chapter 5 tells us of things that easily contaminate us as we found in verse 19 which says now the works of the flesh are manifest which are this adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, reviling, and such like this that Apostle Paul has described in that book of Romans. Christ does not want us to be contaminated in this world of contamination, but that we will keep our body, soul, and spirit together because we are in a race. We are in heavenly race. That song says, Heavenly race, I no go tire. Heavenly race, I no go tire. Heavenly race, I no go tire. I no go tired. It simply says, I won't be tired of running the race. So run with body, soul, and spirit. Keeping yourself together, living a standard life that people outside will actually see the message we carry in and appreciate the Christ we preach and accept him and as their Lord 
and personal savor. We must give God all that belongs to him in our lives. Brethren, we have been encouraged this morning. Make sure that you go out today and live the standard life. When they curse you, don't curse. When they show hatred, love them in reply. And don't avenge yourself. Don't fight for yourself. Allow God to fight for you. And as you do all this and keep this to this standard, remain rapturable. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. The prayer we have before us this morning says, O oh Lord, give me the grace to surrender my totality to your service. Of course, Lord, this is our earnest prayer. We need grace to submit our totality, our body, our soul, our spirit, so that we will be controlled by your Holy Spirit. We will not be controlled by emotions. We will not be controlled by what we go through. We will not be controlled by what we see. We will not be controlled by what we touch. We will not be controlled by what we feel. But as your spirit will help us, we control us, we guide us to live that standard life that you want us to live. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remain blessed. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.